Welcome back to Jacques in the Garden. Today we are going to be doing a massive late summer harvest. But before we do that, I want to swap out this cucumber. Some of you guys have asked, at what point do you actually make the call to swap something out? Because I've mentioned in the past that I like the succession sow my cucumbers. Well, this is pretty much that point. A lot of the leaves are basically dead or dying and it has a decent amount of powdery mildew. It's actually quite loaded with powdery mildew, I should say. Some of the cucumbers are starting to form up a little bit misformed. Most of this is due to watering, but at this point in time, I just don't wanna deal with supporting this anymore. It has a lot of disease, and I have these pickling cucumbers that I wanna get in. So I'm gonna cut out these last two plants, put these in. Actually, two weeks ago, I planted these four in, and they've already started to reach up high, and they're gonna start fooding soon. So let's cut this guy out, swap this in, and then go on a massive harvest haul. I've moved the mulch back now, so the next thing we're gonna do is plant these pickling cucumbers in. This variety is called Cool Customer. <laughs> and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put one on each emitter. I'm probably gonna go a little bit to the left of the emitters to make sure that they have enough space, but there's a perfect little transplant right there. What I have in this little bucket here is a mix of azomite and worm castings. It is my favorite blend to put for starters, or for seedlings, I should say because it has sort of anything a plant would need in order to survive. I don't know if that's entirely true, sorry. <laughs> I think a, a little bit of an overstatement. It has everything that a plant would need in terms of like micronutrients that they might be limited on. So it's a good idea to add it in because it just kind of smooths things out. Forgot the last ingredient here, which is the garden straw. I like to put a lot for cucumbers. Again, I said they have pretty shallow roots overall and they tend to respond to heat very poorly. So while they do need the heat to produce, when they're growing, especially at this stage, they basically have very little roots to collect any water they may need. So I wanna make sure that they have enough so that they stay cool and moist. Before we go to the peppers, let me show you the summer broccoli. This is a variety called Happy Rich. It is a cross between a standard sprouting broccoli and Gai Lan, which is a Chinese variety. The nice thing about this is that the leaves and the floret are really good together. So let me sneak around this side. So the beauty is that when you're harvesting this, you wanna make sure that you leave a leaf node behind to ensure that it could continue to produce. But I'll bring you in a little bit closer and show you exactly what I'm talking about when I say that you could eat the whole thing. So here's a close up of the Happy Rich Summer Broccoli. You could see it is flowering a little bit, but that's not really a big deal. And the nice thing about this is that you cut it so that you get a little bit of leaf and the floret itself. You saute this up and it's really sweet, delicious, and tender. Highly recommend you guys try this out next year. So we're actually gonna start down here in Escamillo City where all these wonderful orange peppers are coming from. So take a look at that, guys. That is just a beautiful, perfect pepper. I'll bring you in a little closer after I harvest a few, but I am in love with Escamillo. It is probably my standout pepper for this particular year. It produces these giant peppers that just have so much color, so much flavor, and they just honestly look great. Like it's, for me, an easy winner. And in our climate, San Diego, they seem to be producing extremely well. Each plant has at least a dozen peppers. I'm just pulling the truly most by far ripe peppers. So there's that. Next is Tequila Sunrise. They're these wonderful little snacking peppers. Again, they're orange. They have this nice sweetness to them. No heat whatsoever. This year I'm growing a lot of sweet peppers over spicy peppers because personally, we just like eating a lot of peppers. And when you get spicy peppers, you just can't eat a lot. You can eat a few of them and enjoy them and that's fine. And I have those, but I just want to eat a lot of peppers. And then over here, we're going to come over to the Plovdiv Capilla. It produces these wonderful super thick walled, super sweet red peppers. These are from Bulgaria. I actually brought the seeds back last year. So I was really excited to grow them. And also I'm very pleased with how they've done. They seem to like our climate here because they're just cranking out even more so than the Escamillo maybe. We've got at least six to harvest on this one plant alone. And also I planted a lot of these. So I'll say one of the reasons why I really like using small pruners like these Felco 14s rather than like the classic Velco 2s, is first of all, they fit really nicely in the holster here. 
I could put them in there unlocked. So then I just pull them out and they're ready to go. But when you're getting inside a very tight maze of plants like this, it's just really nice to have something small so you can make accurate cuts without accidentally cutting a branch off, which if you've been gardening for any amount of time, everyone's done that. <laughs> I can tell you that much for sure. If you haven't, then I don't know what to tell you. You must be a magician. All right, so that's pretty dang good on the larger peppers. I see some Aleppo peppers here, which are wonderful to be dried. They make a very flavorful paprika or sort of hot pepper powder. So I'm gonna harvest those and keep them separate. So I definitely wanna try that. Lastly, I have a ton of Bikino peppers. I think I'll save those and we'll do a little hot sauce recipe. I'll show you guys how I make hot sauce with those peppers in particular, because they're my favorite. I'll harvest a bunch of shishitos, but <laughs> nobody needs to see me pull every single one because there's hundreds. So let's go into a quick little time-lapse. Considering I didn't even harvest close to all the peppers in here, and the fact that I have an entire another pepper bed one row over, it's a pretty good haul. And these Escamillos are gonna be delicious tonight. But take a look at all these peppers, guys. That's just pure abundance and delicious. Now we've got, I don't even wanna know how many tomatoes, but let's go get them. This Florida weave has now been in the ground for 80 days, I wanna say. And it is pumping with tomatoes. So down here are some quite large Bulgarian ones. Over there are a bunch of sunrise bumblebees. So let's go ahead and harvest some tomatoes. Let's start it off by picking some of these big Bulgarian tomatoes. They're called giant red Bulgarian. So <laughs> here's one cluster of tomatoes. You can see that it is quite large. Smell great. We've had a few of these already and they've been quite tasty. The bowl is gonna get full really fast based on the size of these tomatoes. So again, these are the Bulgarian giant reds. I'm gonna come down here and snatch some Marbone. So here are the Marbone tomatoes. I got three of them today. You can see that they have a quite wide size range and they're a very pretty tomato. They have a lot of this kind of ribbing and fluting on it. Let me bring in this big one to show you guys. So this is one of the $15 seeds that I got, $15 seed packet, I should say. And the idea behind it is that it's a hybrid that has heirloom-like flavors and more disease resistance. So I get more vigor, more production, but I still get all the flavor of heirlooms. And also, it's quite the stunner, I must admit. Definitely a tasty tomato. While we're over here harvesting tomatoes anyway, let's quickly talk about what you see around me. You can see that a lot of the plant just doesn't look that great. And this is just naturally part of the tomato life cycle. As it gets older, it starts cranking out a lot of fruit, starts pushing out new leaves, and wants to get rid of some of these lower leaves that aren't doing anything for it. So they just wilt back and they die. It's just what happens. Some of this could be, of course, related to some disease. I had a little bit of powdery mildew, but nothing too crazy this year. So I like to just kind of let them dry back. And then it's really easy to just literally grab a handful, just like this and pull off the whole thing. So that's why they look like that. I'll come through and sweep out this whole weave after I finish harvesting. So let's go grab a couple more. Got a couple plum tomatoes, the powdery mildew resistant variety called Granadero. And then this right here is uh, Marbone. So this is another one of those $15 seed packets. This is supposed to be a cherry purple analog. So overall, it pretty much looks very similar to a Cherokee purple, has that kind of purplish hue to it, has that classic heirloom look to it. But these again are a hybrid that are disease resistant and more vigorous. They've been producing quite well and the taste is honestly pretty much Cherokee purple. I'm quite pleased with these. So here's the basket of the giant beefsteak heirloom and hybrid slicers. Looks wonderful, it's gonna be absolutely delicious. I'll probably end up slicing up a very large salad today. And then some of these are still gonna need another day to ripen, so they should hold. And hopefully we'll eat them all tomorrow, maybe have some friends over. I had to get another bowl because there's just way too many cherry tomatoes. So this last row in the very back are all my cherry tomatoes. I've talked about this in the past, but basically the idea behind this was that I wanted my cherry tomatoes in the back because they require less light. So while these beef steaks are up front, hogging all the light, these guys obviously are very much still capable of producing. 
So we're gonna grab all of these. This is the Sunrise Bumblebee, a nice stripy tomato. I have mixed feelings on this one, personally. The one next to it I actually have more complete feelings on, which is that I generally just don't like it that much. It's called the uh, Lucky Tiger. So it makes these green tomatoes that are kind of hard to tell when they're ripe. They start getting a little bit of sort of reddish orange hue to it, and that's when you're supposed to know. But they're just kind of tricky to nail down. And honestly, for me at least, I found that they were too sweet. I liked a, a more balanced tomato personally. I want a little bit of acid. I want a little bit of sweetness, some tartness. I don't want it to just be a mouthful of sugar. And that's kind of what this is. So I'm gonna think about what I wanna do with them exactly. I might cycle some of them into tomato sauces, or maybe we'll do something like a sun-dried tomato with it, because that might actually be pretty good. Here is where we're at with all the cherry tomatoes, but oh boy, do I have sun gold cherries. <laughs> if you guys want to see some tomato cooking ideas, definitely let me know, because I will be doing a lot of that this weekend. Down there, are the Husky cherry tomatoes, a perfect red cherry tomato in my opinion. On the floor are all the brand new wine cherry tomatoes that I was very excited about, but man, that plant just suffered, never did well, never really produced, and I decided to pull it out, and that's what that mess is. But that's not a problem for now. The problem is how do we get all these cherry tomatoes into this bowl? Trust me, there are plenty more where that came from. I didn't even pick all these sun golds over here because I have some plans for them. But not a bad harvest overall. That's a pretty full bowl of just simply cherry tomatoes. So let's go back and take a look at our current haul as it stands. So here is the bowl of purely peppers, the bowl of almost purely cherry tomatoes, and the bowl of slicers. To celebrate this harvest, we're going to be cutting one of these sun golds in half because my dogs have been trained to only appreciate the best when it comes to tomatoes. Tefra will literally spit out a store-bought cherry tomato, but if I give her a sun gold, she absolutely loves it. And I'll tell you what, little Cosmo here, little reign of terror, tearing up bags, also loves a homegrown sun gold. Hard to beat, right Cosmo? <laughs> Well, that's it for today's harvest, guys. I've got a lot of tomato cleanup to do here. So I'll catch you guys next time on another episode.